The Labour Party said this week they would support a mansion tax and work with the government to introduce it. So is it going to happen? Well, if it is, there has to be some way of deciding how much homes are worth and which ones will be affected. Richard Murphy is a Chartered Accountant and Director of Tax Research UK. Matthew Sinclair is the Director of Taxpayers Alliance. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. And I suppose whatever you think of a mansion tax, uh, this idea of uh, deciding which homes are going to be affected and how much they're worth is fraught with problems. Matthew Sinclair, first of all. Absolutely. There's a reason why politicians are so wary of getting into the game of a council tax revaluation. It's, uh, it's thought to cost about £200 million. Uh, and everyone's seen that these kinds of adjustments in the past have meant higher taxes across the board. Uh, we've seen that from big reorganisations like the poll tax through to, uh, out, through to regular revaluations more recently in smaller parts of the country. And that's why when the government came in they actually destroyed a lot of the data you'd need to do a revaluation because they wanted to say very clearly we're not going to do this. So the idea they're now going to turn around and do the kind of revaluation you'd need if you wanted to put in place higher bands uh, just seems incredible. And th that is what you'd need, is it, Richard Murphy, a complete re-evaluation re of houses if you want to introduce a mansion tax? Well, if there's going to be any justice to a mansion tax, then there's got to be a systematic revaluation, re because otherwise you've got to have people randomly picking properties that might be worth over two million at the suggested cut-off point at the moment. And, of course, that will then lead to massive numbers of appeals, the whole process being tied up in red tape, and the system wouldn't work. But the point is, actually, that, candidly, even revaluing at the top is not enough. We have a highly ineffective local council taxation system at the moment that doesn't raise enough revenue. It's not about whether it's right or wrong to raise more tax. A very small part of local government spending in this country is now paid for by local taxation. We do need to thoroughly revamp local tax. This is one option. But a council tax is just a bodge on the way and a very poor one. It's, but we need to revamp local tax. Does that mean we need to revalue houses? Well, that isn't the only necessary basis on which, of course, you can raise local taxation. There isn't just property tax for local income, uh, local taxation purposes. We could go back to the question of local income taxation, perhaps on a regional basis. But we could do property, but if we do, then we need to be much more scientific. And a land value tax, which actually looks at the underlying value of the property, not the value of the house itself, technical, technically different, but actually much more valid economically, would be another way to go forward. But it would require investment. It would be fairer as a result, then. Matthew Sinclair? I think the problem with a land value tax is that you, you're talking about a lot of the base already being taxed. You already have council tax, already have business rates. Uh, most of the proposals find you can't really tax agricultural land, for example, because the value is just too low. You wind up creating uh, all sorts of incentives to abandon land, abandon property, or simply you just create too much hardship for the people uh, farming this, because the value per acre is just too low. Uh, and that's why you see most proposals exempt there. So you wind up with either quite a small base or not a lot of change from the system we have now. And I think, so I think that the, these, these proposals for a land value tax uh, in the end, they, they miss that we already have the, you know, the highest property taxes in the developed world as a share of national income. Uh, this isn't going to be where we're going to find big new sources okay, of revenue. If you're wanting to move from taxing income, or at least if you want to move to taxing wealth as well, mm. how do you do that? Well, I don't think you'll do it through property in Britain. In Britain, we already have very substantial property taxes, not just council tax, but also stamp duty. And the problem, if you start looking at a wider wealth tax, uh, is that you start getting into problems of capital flight. I mean, Swi uh, the Sweden only abolished its wealth tax uh, you know, about a year ago, and now we're talking that we're going to introduce ours, you know, forgetting all of the lessons they learned uh, at quite considerable cost. You know, capital flight is thought to be over a trillion cr kroner. Now, if you've got those kinds of problems with a wealth tax, and given that in the end the wealth tax is still a tax on income, and it's a tax of people's income that people have earned, they then get it taxed as or well. Inherited, it's a double tax on that. Well, for example, we, we, have, we have an inheritance tax, and again, that's a tax on income that has already been taxed when it was earned. Not true, so Matthew. we've got this situation where uh, we've just got to ask whether this is really the right objective, given we've already got such high taxes on property, which is the key okay. store of wealth. Richard Murphy? Look. <laughs> 
we do need very clearly to increase the taxes paid by the wealthiest in this country because they pay the lowest overall rates of tax by some way of everybody in our economy. That is obviously completely unjust. That's true of council taxes at the moment where 50% of all houses in the southeast of England are on the top band. It's effectively a poll tax. That's obviously unjust. But the reality is that this requires politicians who are willing to go out and say they will look at a positive process of using taxation for redistribution to make sure that if we're all in this together then the richest are paying. Now let's not talk about the micro issues here. If we're serious about this we have to tackle offshore where so much money is hidden. We have to tackle the secrecy that is inherent there to find the wealth that needs to be taxed. We have to tackle the whole problem that people are using companies to avoid taxation. We've seen scandals on this point recently and unless that's tackled the sorts of uh, tycoon tax that Nick Clegg is talking about today simply won't happen. We have to have governments who are willing to say we will match people and their incomes together and we will tax it progressively to produce a fair outcome for Given the people of this country.